evening, everyone, and welcome to the City of Muskegon City Commission meeting for May 28, 2013. We will open with a brief prayer by Pastor Tim Cross from Living Word Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor? Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father, I'm reminded in your word that you said that you would give us leaders that would have your heart. And Jesus, over and over again, you talked about cities and really your passion and love for cities. And Father, we know that you love the world, and part of the world is Muskegon. So you know, we know that you love the city of Muskegon. And Father, I would ask that you would give each of our leaders here your heart for this area, for this city. We thank you for their service, their sacrifice, the things that they're willing to do and, and that they've, they've done for this city. But Father, we ask that you would give them even a larger heart to see your heart, your passion, your desire for this city. And Father, I would ask that today that you would give each of them wisdom. You said wisdom cries out in places like this, and the chief concourses where business and, and commerce and, and decisions are made, that wisdom cries out. And Father, I pray that you would give them ears to hear your wisdom today and throughout their lives and the decisions that they have to make, that they'd be able to distinguish your wisdom from all the other things that fly around them and the voices that they hear. And I ask you to help them with that. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. Can we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Turnquist? Here. Commissioner Markowski? Here. Mayor Galron? Here. Commissioner Hood? Here. Vice Mayor Spataro? Here. Commissioner German? Absent. Commissioner Waringo? Here. <laughs> Thank you. Could we have the consent agenda, please? Approval of minutes, City Clerk. Summary request to approve minutes of the May 13th Commission Work Session meeting and the May 14th City Commission meeting. Staff recommendation, approval of the minutes. Gnarly Barley's Righteous Cuisine Mobile Vending Business Concession Contract for City of Muskegon Parks Public Works. Summary request. Staff is asking permission to enter into a one-year contractual agreement with Nicholas Micah of Gnarly Barley's Righteous Cuisine at Pier Marquette Park, located within the City of Muskegon, to sell various food items as outlined in the proposal from a mobile food truck. Staff recommendation, authorize DPW staff to enter into a one-year mobile vending business concession contract with Nicholas Micah of Gnarly Barley's Righteous Cuisine. Fatty Lumpkin Sandwich Shack, mobile vending business concession contract for City of Muskegon Parks, Public Works. Summary request, staff is asking permission to enter into a one-year contractual agreement with Brett Gilbert of Fatty Lumpkins <coughs> at Pier Marquette Park, located within the City of Muskegon, to sell various foods items as outlined in their proposal from a mobile special trans transitory uh, food unit. Staff recommendation, authorize DPW staff to enter into a one-year mobile vending business concession contract with Brett Gilbert of Fatty Lumpkins. Consumers Energy Rate Case Municipal Coalition Participation Public Works Summary Request. Authorize participation in the Consumers Energy Rate Case Municipal Coalition coordinated by the Michigan Municipal League. Staff recommendation, authorize staff to make the financial contribution of $833.25 to the legal defense arguing against the most recent request for a rate increase by consumer. CDBG Program Administration Agreement, City of Muskegon and City of Norton Shores, Planning Economic Development, Summary Request. The City of Muskegon has contracted with the City of Norton Shores to administer their Community Development and Block Grant Program since 2006. The current agreement concludes on June 30, 2013. The new agreement extends for two years through June 30, 2015. Staff recommendation to approve the agreement and authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign. Cemetery Utility Cart Public Works Summary Request Authorize staff to purchase one Coyote Mertron Utility Cart from J&J &J Farms, the lowest qualified bidder. This machine will replace the 1995 model currently being used. Staff recommendation Authorize staff to make the purchase. Grand Agreement Addendum, Grand Truck Bodie Access, Public Works, Summary Request. Adopt the resolution and authorize the Mayor and Clerk to sign the agreement amendment between the City and MDNR, reflecting the acceptance of the grant based on actual cost. The dredging was completed earlier this month. Staff Recommendation, Adopt the resolution and authorize the Mayor and Clerk to sign the agreement. 
grant agreement with the Department of Natural Resources for Dredging Cottage Grove Launch Ramp and Hartshore Marina Public Works. Summary request. Adopt the resolution, authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the agreement with the Department of Natural Resources for the dredging work necessary at the large and small boat basins of Hartshore Marina and at Cottage Grove Launch Ramp. Staff recommendation, authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign the agreement. Sale of parcel in Seaway Industrial Park, planning economic development. Summary request. To approve the sale of lot seven in Seaway Industrial Park to Schultz Transport, 421 Delano, Muskegon. The company will utilize the new land in its plan to expand its lawn care services. The lot will be combined and the new land will be used for mulch and other lawn care storage. Staff recommendation to approve the lot sale. Approval of extension for realtor and title company procurement contracts for CNS, Community Neighborhood Services. Summary request to, ex to extend the procurement contract to December 31st of 2013 for Green Ridge Realty and Lighthouse, Lighthouse Title Company to be used by the City of Muskegon Community and Neighborhood Services Office. By granting the extension, the expiration date will coincide with the other procurement contracts. <coughs> Staff recommendation to approve the extension of the procurement contracts for Green Ridge Realty and Lighthouse Title Company for the Community Neighborhood S Services Office. Home Consortia Application Community Neighborhood Services. Summary request. The CNS Department is requesting authorization for the City of Muskegon to submit an application as the lead agency for a home consortium as evidenced through a signed agreement with the cities of Muskegon Heights, Norton Shores, and Roosevelt Park. The application to participate as home consortia will be submitted to the Department of Housing and Urban Development in June of 2013. The City Commission is also asked to direct the Mayor to sign a resolution for the home consortium to support the agreement. Staff recommendation to enter into an agreement between the cities of Muskegon Heights, North Shores and Roosevelt Park to form a home consortia from the City of Muskegon's Home Investment Partnership Program. 2013-2014 Water Treatment Chemical Bids, Public Works summary request. Endorse the lowest responsible bidders bids received for a one-year extension of the current contracts for three chemicals used at the water filtration plant. USA LCO aluminum sulfate key chemical fluoristic acid standard carbon powdered activated carbon. Staff recommendation. Staff recommends endorsing the chemical bid extension for one more year with USA Alco, key chemical, and standard, standard carbon. Thank you. Commissioners, you have heard the uh, consent agenda as read. Are there any items you would like to remove for further discussion? Not, I'll entertain a motion, please. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that uh, we adopt the consent agenda as read. Second. It has been moved by the Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Murkowski to approve the consent agenda as read. Any discussion, comments, questions? No, vote please. Commissioner Markowski? Yes. Mayor Gowron? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spataro? Yes. Commissioner Waringo? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Yeah. Commission passes. Thank you. We move on to new business. Item 8, please. Permanent traffic control order install no parking signs on the south side of Forest Avenue between Peck and Clinton Public Works. Summary request. Authorize staff to install no parking signs on the south side of Forest Avenue between Peck and Clinton. Staff recommendation. Authorize staff to install no parking signs on the south side of Forest Avenue between Peck and Clinton. Vice Mayor. Thank you. I would uh, move that uh, uh, we authorize staff to install the no parking signs on the south side of Forest Avenue between Peck, Peck and Clinton and uh, enter into the permanent traffic control order. Second. It's been moved by Vice Mayor Spataro, seconded by Commissioner Waringo to authorize staff to install no parking signs on the south side of Forest Avenue between Peck and Clinton. Any discussion? Commissioner? Uh, that's a short block, and I think it said two or three families have uh, petitioned this, but in their petition they also included uh, parking allowed on Sunday. There's a church on the corner, and it's kind of the entrance to the uh, emergency there at Hackley. Are we saying no parking, or are we going to say parking allowed on Sunday? Good evening, Mr. Elchatel. 
we're making, excuse me, good evening to, to all. We're making no exception. We're uh, asking permission to install the no park signs without any exceptions for Sundays or otherwise. Vice Mayor? Thank you. Yeah, um, the neighbors there have had an ongoing issue, I'm sure. Um, Mr. Al Chattel could inform you as to how long that's been ongoing. It's been quite a while um, with accessing the parking there. The, the problem is, is a lot of the hospital employees park in front of their homes, and as a consequence, since that's a 24-hour, seven-a-day week operation, it's just a constant nuisance. And so that's, that's kind of what's driving this. Uh, different things have been attempted, and, and um, I have not heard from the church. Have they, has there been any contact from the church regarding a Sunday exemption? They made an attempt, but even if you, could, if you were to consider the Sunday exemption, if you will, that's a 24, 24 hours, seven-day operation. It would not alleviate the problem that the residents are right. having out mm -hmm. here because you have employees. The problem that they're having is with the, the way I understand it, with the Hackley Hospital employees that they park out there, I think, for obvious reasons, smoking is one of them, if mm -hmm. you will. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner? There currently is a sign right in front of the church that says no parking except Sunday. Is that coming down? It's going to be no parking on both sides? I believe that's on the north side, if I remember correctly. On the correct. north side. Right. Ah, right. We would not touch that. Not touch All we're that. asking okay. is permission on the south side for right now. And if, if, the, if the problem continues, we might have to come before you one more time to modify the ones on the north side. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. al -Shatel. You're welcome. Any other questions? Can we have the vote, please? I, oh, I, wait a minute. I, I just want to bring out that you know, when we talk about the <coughs> unintended consequences, as healthcare systems have gotten more serious about reducing tobacco <coughs> use and so on, and, and I notice uh, uh, other employers are doing this, the school system's heading this direction, Muskegon County's heading in this direction. When you ban employees from smoking on the property of that particular business or entity, oftentimes what happens is what these neighbors are experiencing they leave the hospital property or the school property or the county property as these things spread and they go across the street and they smoke in the neighbor's yard and leave, you know, turn the neighbor's yard into ashtrays. That's part of what's been happening with this and driving this. Um, you know, a lot of these things are very positive, but that's one of those things that unless you live there, you don't realize kind of the, the burden even very positive organizations and businesses can have uh, on the, the immediate surroundings sometimes. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Can we have the vote, please? Mayor Galwin? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spataro? Yes. Commissioner Raringo? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Markowski? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item B, please. Pierre Marquette Improvement Fund Planning and Economic Development. Summary request. The City of Muskegon established a Pierre Marquette Improvement Fund through the Community Foundation of Muskegon County to receive deposits from Festival Unified Network, Fun Inc., to be used for improvements and events at the beach. Fun Inc. is no longer functioning. The Advisory Committee of Fun Inc. has authorized different oversight and expansion of the fund. See the Community Foundation for Muskegon County Advised Fund Agreement. Staff recommendation to approve the resolution authorize the Mayor and Clerk's signature. Committee recommendation. The Fund Inc. Advisory Committee, the Foundation, and City of Muskegon staff met to discuss the future of the fund, and they recommend approval of transfer of funds to the Community Foundation for Muskegon County, Pierre Marquette, and Margaret Drake Elliott Park Fund. Thank you. Could we have a motion? A motion to approve uh, item B of new business, uh, Pierre Marquette Improvement Fund. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Markowski, seconded by Commissioner Waringo. Two, recommend approval transfer of funds to the Community Foundation for Muskegon County, Para Marquette, and Margaret Drake Elliott Park Fund. Good evening, Ms. Brubaker-Clerk. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Uh, 
This is before you tonight so that we can start using our funds again. I do also want to introduce Heidi Sitsuma from the Community Foundation, and she can help me out if you have some historical questions in terms of the Community Foundation's role with this fund. Uh, but the, the, the monies have been sitting there for a while now since Fund Inc. has not been active. We do want to be able to use those funds again, and we thought this was a good way through this new account to set it up having the representation from the neighborhood, from the commission, from city staff. It also allows us to use larger amounts of the funding if there's a project that the city wants to undertake for larger capital improvements, but also to have a minor amount used for maintenance. But we don't want it all used up for maintenance. We're more looking for the larger projects. So that's an intro, again, if, if you need some more information. And I believe Heidi told me this evening we have a little over 47,000. Forty-seven two fifteen. Okay, good. Commissioner, Turquist? a question in the uh, write-up. It says when the fund goes below fifty thousand dollars, there's a service fee. Do you want to explain from the community foundation standpoint how that works, Heidi? Yeah. Please join us up front, Heidi. If we could just get your name, address. Yep. I'm Heidi Seitzema, sixteen oh four Jefferson Street, Muskegon. Um, I believe in the fund agreement it says during any quarter that the fund balance is less than $10,000, a $50 service fee may be charged. Um, we reserve that right because we consider the $10,000 to be a minimum fund balance for endowed funds. Um, typically we don't charge that, but we do have the right to charge that. I'm so. okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Commissioner Murkowski? Well, in the spending statement, um, it does specifically state that the fund is not intended to be used to support ongoing maintenance of other parks. So could you explain what maintenance would qualify? Um, I think that's where we look to the advisory committee for their recommendations. Um, the foundation is tasked with holding these funds and adhering to the language and the, the recommendations that come from the group who's um, created the fund. And so that advisory committee that consists of one Beachwood Bluffton neighborhood representative, one city staff, and the commissioner who represents that neighborhood would be the advisory committee that decides whether an expenditure falls within these guidelines or not. If they feel that that is the case, that recommendation would come to the foundation from that advisory committee. And unless, you know, there's something that seems to be completely outside of the intent of the agreement that as it's written here um, the foundation would go along with that recommendation so uh, yeah, again, it, it is our intention that these funds be used for larger types of projects that you can actually see and point to as opposed to general maintenance. That's why we have that amount fairly low. But we also realize there may be some maintenance things sometime in the future when we really need it, so we wanted some flexibility there as well. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Heidi. Thank, Thank you, you, Kathy. There's no further questions or comments. May we have the vote, please? Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spitaro? Yes. Commissioner Wieringo? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Murakowski? Yes. Mayor Gowern? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item C, please. Transmittal of 2013 2014 proposed budget, City Manager, Sam Request. At this time, staff is transmitting to the City Commission the proposed budget for fiscal year 2013 2014, which starts July 1st of 2013. Both hard copy and electronic versions of the budget have been distributed to commissioners. Additionally, the budget is available for public inspection on the city's website and at the city clerk's office or at Hackley Public Library. The proposed budget will be reviewed in detail with staff at the June 10th work session. A public hearing on the budget will be held at the regular commission meeting the following evening. City ordinance requires that the budget be adopted by the commission on or before the second commission meeting in June. Staff recommendation, none. Thank you. Well, commissioners, you've received your copies of the uh, budget. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do your homework between now and the uh, 10th. Yeah. Our entire work session will be taken up uh, going over it with fine tooth comb. Uh, once again, I believe the staff has done an uh, excellent job, fine job uh, pointing out the realities of our fiscal condition and uh, doing all that they can to uh, keep the organization uh, operating in a, a very, very uh, good condition, all things considered, the economy and the like. 
Um, but uh, be prepared, and uh, we'll be sitting down with our red pencils on the uh, 10th. Mm -hmm. Any other business from the commission? Uh, Commissioner. Can we have an update on the negotiations with the Harris Group, where we're at? I can tell you that uh, a draft has been prepared of an agreement, and that's the status of it at this point. Someone will come back to us. Public comment. Uh, Ron Madison, if you'd like to approach the podium, give your name and address. Each individual coming before the commission is given three minutes and is always asked to give their name and address for the record. Good evening, Ron. Good, good evening. Ron Madison, 2106 Lake Avenue, uh, most appropriately owner of Rackets Downtown Grill, Western Avenue. Um, I just wanted to, um, to make a couple comments as I know that um, you're uh, in the process of con considering some things that affect uh, bike time as a group uh, and its organization and, and future in downtown Muskegon. And um, also, I guess, make myself briefly available for questions if you may have any as it uh, affects downtown businesses from my point of view and um, as discussed with other businesses. But um, I guess I just briefly, briefly wanted to express my appreciation to the, the group itself and the investment that they've made in downtown, both financial and in time. I know that um, it's been significant financially and um, uh, quite a large <coughs> group of folks that volunteer to uh, continue to make this uh, event a go each year. Um, I think... Uh, you know, we, we were pretty excited from the beginning when we heard about this event. And um, I don't think we really had any idea what sort of an impact it could have on us. And as, as it grows and continues, we've, we've only had a, um, a better relationship develop each year with the event itself. And uh, for that reason, even more of an appreciation. Um, this last year in particular, with the lack of a music festival downtown, um, we were even more appreciative for this particular event because otherwise it would have been a pretty quiet summer downtown for us. And um, I can say that some of have even expressed um, the fact that they may not have survived the summer without it. And that's the sort of impact that it has had. And um, I understand that um, there are other things that are important to, to us as a downtown and a community and as we grow and things to consider on both sides of the coin. But I just wanted to express my my appreciation and um, the significant impact it has had and the relationship that um, that we've been able to develop with the organization and it's apparent that they do care about uh, the success of us as downtown businesses and uh, the relationship that we have. So, unless you have any questions at all for me in regards to specifics, um, I guess that was really all I had to say. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Thank you for your business. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mike Vano. My name is Mike Vano, 930 Washington, Muskegon. I'm here for the same reason to convey some concerns over bike time or the lack thereof if it's changed. I represent Muskegon Eagles, corner 7th and Western. Mm -hmm. um, the revenue created by bike time is the second to none in this town, and I just want everybody to know that. We're not out there. We're there volunteering. Um, we do our thing as a club, a social club. But we also, because of bike time, they, that enables us to generate a lot of funds to donate to a whole bunch of local charities. That's basically what the Eagles is about. I mean, I got a list as long as my arm if you want to hear them. But you know, if there's proposed changes are, are made, it's going to be a drastic effect to a lot of, a lot of businesses. We'll survive them, but maybe our charities won't. So. I just want to pass that along. If anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Fano. Thank you. Mm 
Mr. Clyde Whitehouse. <coughs> Clyde Whitehouse, uh, 149 Shoreline Drive in Muskegon. Uh, representing Bike Time, I'm the chairman of Bike Time. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about Bike Time and its future. Uh, I'm sure you've heard enough about Bike Time in the last few weeks. Um, while it does for the town, $22 million worth of income to the community, 100,000 people show up for the event. Um, we are in favor, this is uh, in reference to the farmer's market. It's not here to, that we're against the farmer's market. We're 100% in favor of the farmer's market. We're looking at a way to uh, collaborate and to uh, share the farmer's market on that weekend. There has been some discussion that there cannot be a uh, sharing or a collaboration that we'll, we can work together. That's why I'm here tonight, to try to figure out how we can do that. Bike time and hot rod, Harley Davidson, I hate to put the two together, but uh, hot rod this year was nominated for an award with Dealer News, which is the uh, consumer reports or the JD power of the power sports world. 20,000 dealers in the United States and Canada. They were nominated uh, for the last four years to be one of the top 100 dealers in the country, uh, and we have been one of the top 100 dealers in the country for the last four years. This year, we were nominated to be the dealer of the year for Muskegon, Michigan. Uh, we finished in the second runner-up to a metric dealer, so we're the number one Harley dealer in the country. We were also nominated at the same time for the Bike Time event. Um, of all the events in the United States and Canada, Bike Time was nominated to be a uh, dealer, uh, event of the year, I'm sorry. Uh, we were one of the five finalists. We were not the winner, unfortunately. We were the runner-up again, bridesmaid once again. But uh, we were one of the top five events in the country and in Canada. That takes in Sturgis, Daytona Bike Week, <coughs> Austin, and all the others. So I'm trying to point out that it is very valuable, uh, not only to this community, but to the country. And uh, people come from all over the country to make up the 100,000 people that come here. <coughs> the uh, M Live people here recently in the Rotary here in town have nominated us the uh, festival of the 2012 Outdoor Festival of the Year. So we all know the importance of bike time. I'm not here to press upon that. What I'm here to do is trying to find a way that we can work together with bike time and the farmer's market. The Downtown Believers Corporation, in which myself and Dr. Candle own the property in at Hot Rod, is uh, named that for two reasons. One, when we first came here, we believed in downtown Muskegon. We were asked by the city to come here, build our facility here, and build our business here. So we believed in it. We called it the Downtown Believers, Muskegon Downtown Believers Corporation. We also are Christians. I don't want to get into a faith thing, but we're also Christians, so it has two name purpose. We came down here, the city made a commitment to us. We made a commitment to the city. The committee, uh, the city at the time um, wanted us to come down here, clean up the site where Continental was, which we did. Um, built what the CVB and the Chamber of Commerce call a show place where they can bring people to show our facility to get other businesses to come downtown. We're pretty proud of that. We're happy that they do it. We're here to... Uh, help develop downtown, and we believe that the farmer's market will do that. Uh, at the time we came downtown, there was an idea of building bike time. The city had a commitment to us to help us build that. We had a commitment to the city to build bike time. It started off with $6 million worth of revenue to the city and 30,000 attendees. Seven years later, we have 100,000 attendees and $22 million worth of revenue to the city. We've done a survey um, to make sure that we're doing the right thing with bike time. It was run by Professor Burlingame out of the uh, Grand Valley University. It showed us several different things. It showed us that Western Avenue is 98.7% 98.7% of the people that come to bike time feel that Western Ave closed and that it's bike time traffic only and there's only motorcycles on it is why they come to the event. Unsolicited court requests were that safety was an item on Western Avenue uh, if there was anything but motorcycles on that uh, street. Also, they thought that uh, vendors on the street or on the sidewalk was an issue as well with safety because of the bikes going up and down there. 
we've tried to uh, look at all of those issues and uh, correct them, make the event better. One of our ideas is um, to move all the vendors to one facility, one spot. That was also one of the other requests by all the people that come to Bike Time. Can you put the venue, uh, vendors in a venue where they're all at the same place? We've had the use, a commitment from the people that own the property where the uh, farmer's market is going for the last five years. We've used it for <coughs> vendors. Uh, we think the future is to put all the vendors there. Um, we've had the disabled veterans there, the Christian motorcycle riders, all those type of things as well as vendors. Bike Time Hot Rod supports multitude of charities. The American Red Cross has made over $125,000 from Bike Time. The United Way made $198,000 last year donate a donation of a motorcycle. And I could go on, but I won't because I only have 10 minutes. Uh, the business owners downtown have asked us to get the vendors off the street. They pay taxes 365 days a year. I think their request should be attended to. So that's another reason why we feel it should be a venue where the vendors are. Because we've had that commitment and use of that property for five years, we don't really believe we're asking for anything different than we've asked for the last five years. Other than that we can work through this, as I said before, in a collaboration and a sharing. Mayor Warmington came at the last commission and uh, was asked to go speak to the farmers. Said that we'd set up a committee that we all could talk about this. I've gone and spoken with the farmers myself. I spoke to the farmers and the, uh, I guess she is called the market master, and got their opinions on what they believe should happen at bike time. As we know, the farmer's market is built for the farmers. We want to make sure they're happy. We want to make sure that the city is benefited from the farmer's market bringing people downtown. It's not all about bike time. It's all about the city, the farmer's market, and bike time. 90% of them, and even more, as we all know, do not want to move. But we know they're going to move. Nobody likes change. I don't like change. I'm set in my ways at my age, as we all are. Uh, they understand the importance uh, of moving. They don't like it but they understand the importance of moving. They understand the importance of developing downtown and bringing more businesses there. Farmers Market will do that as we have done that. Is my time up? Almost. <laughs> I, I Hopefully you'll let me go a little longer. Um, but 90% of them do not want to move. 25 to 30% of them won't move, they say, period. They're not going to the new Farmers Market. We think by sharing it with bike time, sharing it with the city, Supporting it with bike time, supporting it with hot rod and other businesses downtown, we can change their minds about moving if we all work together. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be all. 30 to 50 percent of them say they will not attend bike time. Uh, in explaining to them that they're there on Thursdays and Saturdays, and they could be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday during bike time, that we're going to bring 100,000 people instead of 3,000 people, uh, it may be beneficial for them to come to bike time. Uh, we need to convince them the value of the market of bike time. How do we do that? I believe we need the committee that we discussed. Um, as chairman, I haven't heard anything about setting up the committee, but I'd like the commission here tonight to uh, make a decision to try to set that up, discuss it amongst bike time, the commission, and the farmers get all three of the parties together to work this out. In, in the interest of uh, yes. in, in the interest of a number of other individuals that I have a pile of, I'll have to uh, have you wrap it up, Clay. Okay. I will. Um, we're not asking for anything that we haven't asked for before. We're asking for Western Avenues to be closed as we have for seven years. We're asking to control the market as we have for the last five years with sharing it with the farmers not controlling it, saying it's our way, sharing it, collaborating with them, finding out what their interests are, what their needs are, what our needs are, and what our interests are. We're looking for a long-term commitment from the city that we received in the beginning when we moved downtown. We're asking for a further commitment by this commission and the city to uh, a long-term arrangement 
uh, with the committee and um, the city, the farmers, and ourselves. We would like that committee to be set up uh, within the next week or less, if possible, uh, so that we can work out the details to make that happen. And we would like an answer or come back to the uh, 25th of June and get a uh, commitment from the commission that we all can work together and make this happen. Um, the only thing I guess I want to wrap up is by saying that uh, if we cannot work this out, as we've discussed before, um, I'm not sure bike time is going to look the way it has in the last seven years. If we do not close Western Ave, our survey says bike time really doesn't work. I don't think any of us want that. I know as chairman of the board of bike time, I don't want to be the chairman of the board, as I'm sure you guys don't want to be the commission that had bike time go away. When it's a simple solution of working together, keeping the farmers happy, keeping the city happy, and keeping bike time happy. I just don't want it on my watch. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Clyde. Any and questions? I like Any questions before the Mr. Mayor? Uh, you said that two of you have talked to the farmers. Could you briefly tell us the reaction with your meeting with them? I've talked to the farmers as the chairman of Bike Time. Okay. Steve yeah. was asked to. I spoke to them. Okay. And what is their opinion? Uh, their opinion is, number one, they really don't want to move. But number two, they see Bike Time as uh, chaos, you might say. There's so many bikes. Where do, I get my, where do I move my truck? How do I get my truck in and out of there? How do I set up for that day? And we discussed that, number one, it's no different than any other day. You show up at 6 a.m., there's nobody on the streets. You're there until whenever you decide to leave, 10, 12, 2, midnight if you want to stay. I don't know why anybody would leave with 100,000 people trying to sell their products to them instead of 3,000. Um, so once we discuss that with them, they understand that. And then how do, we get, how do we work out the details to get them in and out of there in such a hard situation with traffic? It's easily resolved. I have a map over here if you'd like to see. Um, Morris Street is open. We can get them in and out. I showed them how on the map, where we would put them. We put them all together. That was one of their requests, that we don't spread them out amongst everybody. We all want to be in the same place so we can display our products together. Um, after discussing with them, they a lot of them thought that it probably could work. Uh, but they're still concerned. People don't like change. Commissioner? Uh, can we see the map? It's up to you guys. I don't have to file me. Might take you 10 minutes to figure out how to use this thing. That the other way around. No, this is Morris Street right here. That's Morris, that's and Morris then that's right Terrace. Terrace is right here. This is Market Street? No. no. Mm -hmm. Market Street goes up the middle. Oh, sorry, you've Terrace. got right. your street chart. Market Street's right here. Sorry. Right. Market's here. And this is Jefferson. Right. And Western is over here. There you go. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. Um, this street is open because mm -hmm. the post office is on, as well as the bus station. So it's never going to be closed. Terrace is never going to be closed because of the fire station. Western Ave is closed. This has been closed since we started at Market Street because there's nothing there anyway at the moment. And the Jefferson is closed over to Western. My suggestion, the discussion with the farmers, was that we put all the farmers here, which they liked. They all want to be together. And they like this because they can get in and out of here easy access. And if somebody wants to leave at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock, whatever time they want to leave, we can get them on Warren Street, they get out here, take a look right by Terrace Building. Out to 31 in there. And they've taken their truck and they left without any confusion with traffic. Uh, then we would put other vendors over here, the vendors that we have now, and they set up at 10 o'clock and they can't leave until the event's over. So nothing will change. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. Um, what about 
on the other side of uh, market, on the uh, north the side, side of market. North side of market. North, north side of market. Up here? Yeah. That's well, market's down the middle. Right. So, Morris. Right there. Oh, north right north there. is yeah. on the right side of that. I, I'm yeah. speaking north. Yeah. Yeah. Right there, yes. Yeah, but depending on how many farms. Right now, I think you have. 50 50, I guess, down there. 50 percent of our farmers, 50 percent of them sell other things. But depending on how many come, we would start a year to work as far as we have to. And we, one of my thoughts would be that anybody that's made a year commitment to the farmer's market, you would consider a farmer or a vendor, vendor or what do you want to call them, but if they've made a year commitment to, this, to the city, then they would have preference. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yes, sorry. Oh, no. So, Everything north of market would be for the farmers in in the uh, yes, market yes, area. North, yes. Yes. This year. Um, how many farmers? Depends how many farmers we show up. We're going to accommodate them all. It is their market. Yeah. Clyde, I'm convening an initial work committee, which will start with myself and Commissioner Hood and staff <clears throat> members, and uh, then we'll be moving on from there. And in our prior discussions, um, I've always stated that I see the the festival as you know a benefit and uh, a good to the city. Uh, so, right. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I do stand uh, with you know a commitment to the new market farmers and the vendors who have been a long time uh, business presence you know within the community uh, but as I said before you know we stand to work with all parties uh, to make the best uh, possible plan out of this but still realizing that as uh, the years progress uh, Western Avenue is going to continue to change and the, the the need for flexibility of you know, all parties. I think that's one of the reasons why I want to take the vendors off of Western Avenue. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing. There's sure. going to be no place for, for, for the vendors. But they're always, if we close the street, there's always where you close the park. And really, that is the excitement of bike time. Right. Uh, no matter how you look at it, that's really what it's about. Right. Uh, that's what they say. They said 90 some one percent of them say that. Right. And, uh, but even though, even though you don't have those two lots with you know, a series of three-story buildings. It, it is a new edifice. <coughs> it isn't. It is a build-out. It is, you know, appropriately being set up for that enterprise that has been a long term here in this community. And hopefully, we will continue to work together to uh, make make, make the best choices. I think we all have the okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we just need to Very get good. everybody together, figure out the new deal. If it's a good deal for everybody, it's a good deal. All right. Thank you, Clay. All right, thank you for coming. I hate that record because it's boring. I Joshua Alden Brady. Good evening, Joshua. Just as a note before I start, I'm going to diverge from my usual form and read my comments. I have a lot to cover, and this is a, a very emotional issue because of what we've come through on this, and I want to hit everything in as little time as possible. Okay. Can um, I have your name and address before yes. you start, please? Yes. My name's Joshua Eldon Brady. I live at 1336 Spring Street. I'm here on by half of myself and my wife, Anna Eldon Brady. A little over a year ago, my wife and I purchased a small house located at 1192 Wood Street. We had heard the conversations going on for years in the city of Muskegon about the need for a grocery store in the downtown area and knew that our neighborhood was one desperately in need. With over a quarter of our neighbors without reliable transportation, very limited healthy food options at the local party store, Family Dollar and Benson Drugs, a better local source was needed. The house was perfectly located in the B1 neighborhood business zoning district and right next to the community party store, formerly and still known by most as the Wood Street Market, and a hair salon. We were able to obtain the property at a good price and buy an unbuildable lot next door from the city for use for parking. Its location in the middle of a small business district and at one of the worst reputed corners in Muskegon created an opportunity not only to serve 
the food needs of the neighborhood in an accepted business area, but also to work at countering the negative effects of the liquor sales at the party store across the street. During the summer and fall of 2012, where we worked at doing the repairs we could do on the building and figuring out exactly what we need to do to convert it to a business, the salon next door closed and a Mexican grocery opened. We determined it was unwise to borrow the amount of money we needed to convert it to a business at that point, possibly threatening the success of both by starting two groceries right next door to each other at the same time. Well, Mexican grocery doesn't serve the entire food need. We certainly didn't want to threaten its business because it helped the situation a lot. Right now we're watching what happens next door with eyes towards the future to, to see what will happen there. The discussion this spring regarding the farmer's market opened a new idea to us. Our property is zoned for the sale of grocery items, zoning virtually identical to the downtown on that regard, and has enough open space to house a dozen or so vendors. This could be done without the substantial debt that would have been required to renovate the indoor space. We've also heard the loud concerns of many of our neighbors that a new city market would either for physical or psychological barriers and reasons be inaccessible to some of those in our neighborhood. The statement of this commission that the city market was not intended to serve the neighborhoods but rather the general community spoke to a need for markets that would serve some of our neighborhoods directly. Additionally, with employment prospects looking less than promising, the ability to make some of our own income was certainly a positive component of the idea. We've been working over the last several years to expand our growing space, and with acquisition of several new lots and improvements we've made to the ones we have, we're finally to the point of facing the, the, the prospect of being able to grow more than what we can personally use and be able to sell some of the excess. Since doing so, selling anything requires registration as a business under Article 50 of the City Ordinances, we put the farm and the farm market together under a single business plan and submitted it as a business registration to the City Clerk at the beginning of April of this year. Business registration was certainly not anticipated by us to cause any problems. We've watched the past couple years as the county has welcomed neighborhood and community gardeners to sell at their stand at the City Market as McLaughlin Grows has proudly expanded their urban farm, and this year as the Community Foundation through the Healthy Muskegon Project awarded their head grants to three recipients, McLaughlin Grows loved community garden and kids food basket that clearly listed growing and selling in Muskegon as part of their business plan under the grant project. I would personally spoke with Mr. Franzak in the zoning department multiple times about our plan to put a grocery store at 1192 Wood Street before we had to put that aside and never heard of any concerns over that. The response from everyone in the community we shared the idea to has been positive. I received a call from the city clerk that I needed to speak with Mr. Franzek in planning a week or so after I submitted the application. That conversation was the first sign of concern. We waited several weeks and not having heard anything back, I called the city clerk's office and they told me our application has been denied. I had to email Mr. Franzek to find out why. It's now the end of May. We still haven't received an official denial of our registration. That, that alone is a very troubling sign to me. That's part of the procedure. But that's not the, what I'm here tonight to ask you about. The email I received from Mr. Franzek indicated two issues and two key statements from the city. One, that growing produce to sell was flatly prohibited by ordinance anywhere in Muskegon and two, that we couldn't open a farm market because outdoor sales violated a clause in the B1 Neighborhood Business District Zoning Preamble. This is the point we were at when I last spoke to you. I still don't understand the statement that growing is prohibited. Our community garden ordinance states that growing produce is a use by right anywhere in the city and doesn't place any limit on what you do with the produce once it's grown. Community gardens across the city and farm like McLaughlin Grows have been celebrated as they openly sell at the city market and other locations across the city, as they well should be. We've been told by a handful of people that we should have just sold and ignored the business registration requirement, and that's perhaps the saddest part of this situation. From what I can tell, not a single one of the numerous farms and gardens across the city that sell produce and are therefore required to register as business by our city ordinance have done so, and they're allowed to continue in business. Yet when we make the attempt to follow a rule that a lot of people aren't, that a lot of people told us we shouldn't, our business is shut out. 
Should it be any surprise when a legal trade then is what most people associate with the business corners in our city? At the least, this should require a re-examining by this commission of what ordinances we still value, what ones we don't intend to enforce and therefore should remove. That's also not what I'm here to ask you to do tonight. I understand even less the opposition to selling. The clause in the B1 district preamble that was relied upon to deny our application is almost identical to a clause in the body of the B3 business district. That's downtown zoning. Yet this commission endorsed the construction of outdoor market in the B3 district. Which is it? <clears throat> does the clause prohibit markets in B1 or B3? Or doesn't it? You can't have it both ways. But that's not also not what I'm here to ask you to do tonight. On the 29th of April, I submitted an appeal of our application denial to the city clerk and to the planning department by way of the zoning administrator, Mike Franzak. It was submitted to the city clerk for the city manager, as under Article 50, Section 484B, we have an absolute right to an appeal of our denial of business registration to the city manager within 30 days. Under the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act, Section 125.3603 through 3604 of the Michigan Compiled Laws, we have a right to appeal the determination of the zoning official to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So I submitted it to Mr. Franzak as the zoning officer. The letter in the appeal clearly stated notice of our appeal and gave notice of what we were appealing to both bodies along with legal citations and explanations of why we were submitting a dual appeal. On May 8th, we received a letter that the city manager was refusing to give us a hearing until after the Zoning Board of Appeals hearing. Since it appeared to give assurance that we would receive a hearing once the zoning issue was resolved, we were at first willing to look past the fact that we would not get our hearing within the 30 days that the ordinance gave us the right to. On May 16th, having not heard anything back about scheduling of our ZBA hearing, I emailed Mr. Franzek again asking if anything more was needed. He proceeded to state that we had gotten a denial from the city manager, ignoring the fact that we had also noticed an appeal to the ZBA. And to say that we would have to apply for a variance, then to change pace and demand we file an application to the ZBA if we wanted a hearing. At around the same time, the notice from the city came out that the June ZBA meeting, sorry, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting had been canceled for lack of business. We filed our notice of appeal as laid out by the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act over three weeks before the deadline for the June meeting. The notice met the requirements and as the City of Muskegon has not provided a form for submitting a notice of appeal, it was provided in a generic form that clearly identified the grounds for our appeal. Since this commission has not chosen to set a fee for the city fee schedule for a claim of appeal or any other type of appeal under either the city clerk's office or the planning or zoning department, no fee was paid at the time it was submitted. As of today, we have been denied both of the appeals that we have a right to. The city manager has clearly stated in writing that he will not give us an appeal, and the planning department, by canceling the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, has indicated the same. The Zoning Enabling Act gives us one other option. We can go to the circuit court. That's not what I have to do, or not what I want to have to do. We've done everything we could to work with the city. We've done everything we could to make our operation fully conform with city ordinances, even when state law would give us a preemption right to do otherwise. We've done everything we could to try to meet the needs of our neighbors as we plan our setup. And we've done everything we could to try to bring more of a property in our neighborhood back to productive use. And I could stand here tonight and list all the reasons why we should be able to do what we're trying to do. I'm not going to go more into detail on that. At some point, this commission does need to address the problems in our zoning that let the city officers do this, to rewrite it to be clearer about what exactly is allowed and what needs to be done. And I know that the Zoning Board of Appeals is the proper next step, but that's not being given to us as an option. Unfortunately, tomorrow is 21 days since the city manager refused to do his job under the city ordinance and give us an appeal. Tomorrow we have to take this over your heads. I'm not here because I, or I am here because I want to give you one last chance to let us deal with this the right way. We're not asking for you to give us approval or give us a business registration. That's the CBA and the city manager's job. 
We want our hearing. Our appeal was filed three full weeks before the deadline for the June 11th meeting. Can yet last week. Up, I have about three more sentences. Do you have a question? No, no, I just need to have you wrap it up. Uh, last week, the ZBA canceled the meeting claiming lack of business. Your zoning administrator refuses to put our appeal on the agenda. He's stolen our right to a hearing. I don't want to have to take this over you and out of city hands, but unless you change something right here and right now, I won't have an option. I'll have to take this above the city level. And once I do, it's not you I'll be working with anymore. It's the circuit court. Once we go beyond that, it ceases to be the city's ability to control things. Because the city refuses to follow the law, I have to file this wonderful paperwork tomorrow unless you change something tonight. My suggestion, Joshua, is that you fill the proper applications as was suggested to you by the uh, city manager and make the application fee and they get you right into the process. As I stated to Mr. Franzak, the zoning administrator, there are two separate and distinct powers of the Zoning Board of Appeals under state law. One is to hear applications, one is to hear appeals. The Zoning Board of Appeals does not have the power to hear an application to grant a business registration. They have the power to hear an appeal. There is no form provided by the city for appeal and all requirements for an appeal were met in our filing. Yes. Mr. Mayor, could, could we just... Go ahead, Council. I was just going to ask for clarification because there's... I follow this up to a point because I know there's an application for getting on the Zoning Board of Appeals agenda mm -hmm. and there is a fee uh, for that and so I was a little surprised to hear that there's not a fee on the schedule since we voted on that not too long ago. So it, it, could you clarify, or yeah. is there a staff person who could clarify what that process is? Let me try there and, and clarify. Thank you. There are two somewhat related issues occurring. One is a business registration that Correct. has been applied for. It has been denied. It's been denied because the business that's being proposed at the location that's being proposed is not permitted under the zoning ordinance right. as determined by the zoning administrator. Right. The appeal on the business registration goes to the city manager. He has responded in writing saying, I'm not going to listen to that appeal because you have this outstanding zoning issue. The applicant, for a, after receiving a zoning determination from the zoning administrator, has several options. One of them is an appeal. You do have a form for an appeal of the zoning administrator's sure. decision and a fee that goes with that. Separate and apart is the property owner can ask for a variance. There is a form, it's the same form, and there is a fee for a variance. In this case, as I understand what Mr. Eldenberry just said, he's asked not for a variance, but wants to appeal the zoning administrator's decision. There is a form application. There is a fee that associated with that. He has chosen not to do that. Okay. The, in response to your question, uh, I'm the sorry. property I, I, does I would, not. I asked, I asked our staff, and he's answered that question. Um, so I don't know if other people have questions, but um, that, that's what I needed to know as we move forward with this. But as I had checked into it, my, my suggestion to you is to fill out those applications and pay the fee and get into the the ZBA does not have the power to hear it under those applications. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jennings. Good evening. My name is Robert Jennings. I live at 3553 Marina View Point. And yes, Mr. Mayor, it is still a long stone's throw from CJ's deceased pub probably wonder why I bring that up every time. Uh, I believe that responsible citizens have to stand upon their principles and convictions and values. And I feel that that business was closed. Uh, it, it was against the community's interest. And 
I think that it was a patently intolerable mistake. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak in public and before the commission this evening. I'd like to personally thank publicly my commissioner, our area, in which I live, uh, Mr. Turnquist, Commissioner Turnquist. He spent some time with me clarifying some items that I appreciate, some questions I have that I didn't want to take the commission's time with at a, at a regular meeting. But I just, again, would like to publicly thank him for that research and, and the time that he gave me. I'm here tonight to speak about an article in today's paper. I, I don't know if you've had a chance to read this or not. Uh, probably not, but uh, it's a very heartening article in regards to $600,000 being invested in our community, and, and that is certainly the kind of uh, development that we look forward to, and we certainly should be very accepting, and I feel very accommodating uh, for the individuals, the, the groups of individuals, the companies that make those kinds of investments, because we need to achieve our potential, and I feel that that it's an important step in doing so. Uh, it's in regards to the Harris Hospitality Group. You, the commission awarded that group the, um, the possibility of developing this site on the former CJ property. Now here's my question, please bear with me. I just have uh, two short paragraphs to read firstly. Uh, Kathy Brubacher Clark, the Economic Development Director for Muskegon said, Harris has to, count, has to hone in on what they want to do at the beach. She said that if their plans go outside the land that, it, that the current building sits on, they will have to go back to the city commissioners for permission. I understand that part of it. As it stands, Harris and city planners are free to negotiate and have the mayor sign off on the deal without going back to the commissioners. Uh, that bothers me. Now, maybe I don't understand the process, but I would hope that Mr. Turnquist would not want to be left out on that uh, process. I certainly don't want him to be left out on that in regards to the particulars of that development uh, if they go beyond those borders. And I would hope that uh, Commissioner Markowski would also have some concerns there, as well as Commissioner Germain, who was the only one who asked a question about the fairness and the appropriateness of the CJ pub being closed, okay? So uh, that would be my question then. I'm unhappy and, and, and concerned about that process if the city commissioners uh, have to go uh, take a back seat, if you will, to the process in which uh, this development is being uh, built or instigated or whatever. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, could, nice can mayor. I say something? Uh, this issue has been brought up several times, and I think uh, the audience tonight is particularly appropriate for this comment, and I won't bring it up again. But everybody who holds a liquor license anywhere in the state of Michigan is beholden to the Liquor Tr Control Commission for that license. And there's certain regulations that they set out. Part of that is a recommendation from the local municipal body. And the standards are outlined as to what we can require and not require. We hold everybody to the same standard. There are people in this room who had to work hard to make sure they could meet that standard and maintain their license in good standing, and they did so. One particular vendor, two years ago now, um, wasn't able to do that. Uh, as the process played out, we found out that there were many unpaid vendors, not just uh, extensive fees and back taxes owed to the city, but also to other jurisdictions and other vendors. And to indicate that this was a viable business that somehow this commission uh, killed, I think is not an accurate statement. And I think it's unfair when the many other liquor, liquor license holders in the city of Muskegon, some at cost to themselves because of the business climate <coughs> over the last few years, have met those standards. 
So I don't think it's fair to the rest of them if we had done a special deal or waived the rules for one particular vendor and yet required everybody else to comply. And, and so I just wanted to say that. Um, that has weighed on me, and like I said, tonight there are a number of people in the audience who are associated with liquor license uh, establishments, and they've played by the rules, and to be fair to them, we have to treat everybody equally. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Abiati. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, everybody. I turn my little gadget on here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if we could just get your name and address, please. Abby Ade, 1946 Latard Avenue, Muskegon, Michigan, in the Lakeside Neighborhood Association area. <clears throat> to city commissioners, my friends and leaders, I want to respond to the farmer's market bike time issue. My dear friends, though I am no historian, I am keenly aware that American historical literature is punctuated with certain men and women who believe their theories, positions, and or causes were just and stood firm against the winds of opinion. While the relocation of the farmer's market will, will surely be more than an addendum to our history, it does require that we take a moment to reflect and rethink for just a moment. As my leaders of this fine city, I join you for most <clears throat> of the public hearings concerning the relocation of the farmer's market. We heard strong support for the move mingled with deep concerns of injustice and insensitivity. Tension in our conflict was a way of placing people in compromising positions for the sake of finding peace in hopes that what was done in the immediate will work itself out in the long run. <clears throat> In the midst of the tense conversation with the vendors, the issue of potential conflict with bike time was lifted up from a group that was already concerned that their potential decisions that brought them to that decision of that place of conflict would not find a way out. And so I think the tension moved us or our leaders to affirm a position to handle the problem or the conflict by simply endorsing in response that the bike time would not conflict with the farmer's market. It was in that moment that an agreement was expressed <clears throat> of not allowing the bike time to interfere with the relocation and activities of the farmer's market. I believe in my heart that everyone in that room, the vendors, the city leaders, the business leaders, meant well. And I would be the first to stand against anyone claiming the decision was rooted in bitterness. Everybody in that room meant well. But there was one very significant factor in the equation of best practices that was left out the voice of those organizing the bike time. I would like to invite our city leaders, the leaders of the farmer's market, and the leaders of bike time to convene at the earliest possible date to model a best practice that is indicative of quality leadership. Fairness requires that everyone is at the table and that we all work together for what is best for our entire city. Just remember, in every powerful relationship, in every social and political advancement, someone or everyone has to give up something. It is in the giving up that we create synergy, a better community, a better outcome. You can do it, my leaders. I believe in you. Thank you, Abiyadi. Good evening, Commissioner Nash. Thank you. 
How are you doing this evening, sir? Not too bad, Your Honorable Mayor. I'm uh, coming to you mostly as Charles Nash today. So if you would excuse the title. But uh, to, the, to the city commission, first of all, I'm not as uh, eloquent as Dr. Abbiati, <laughs> so my dialogue is going to be a little bit straightforward and simple. Um, I come to you guys today because I've uh, taken some time to, to sit and think about uh, this situation with the uh, bike time and the farmer's market. And as you know, through most of the decision making through those different times, I really haven't been uh, a voice of, of reason in any one of those situations, even with the move or things of that sort. And, and we do our best to try to uh, refrain from those things and leave those there. But when I think a situation is uh, significant enough, you know, sometimes you have to at least let your voice be heard so that uh, people know where you're at and understand your opinion. Um, I had got a call, and I went over to see uh, Mr. Whitehouse and uh, sat down and had a discussion with him regarding the situation. And uh, all I've got from mostly both sides is just, you know, media information and people that I know, people that are close to it, uh, whether it's commission or not. But uh, sitting down and listening to Mr. Whitehouse, uh, it brought back the word that's been thrown around for these last four to six years. And that's the word of uh, collaboration, collaboration, uh, share, uh, sharing and working together. And uh, Mr. Abbiati talked about best practices, and I think best practices is just that. Um, one thing I think that has been an epidemic with the Muskegon community, the Muskegon County community, is that we, uh, we talk a lot about working together. But when it actually comes to that point, we don't do that. And it's always usually someone sticks their feet in the ground and they just will not budge. And in listening to the idea and the plan that they had, uh, me as a, as, a, as a citizen, uh, me as a businessman, me as an uh, uh, elected official, it, it just made too much sense. It really made a lot sense. And not only that, but understanding the history behind not only uh, Hot Rod, but understanding the history behind Bike Time, understanding how all these things came to develop, and then to look down the road and think that, you know, your greatest supporters could sometimes become your worst enemy is not a picture that I think that was painted from the start. So my request is that uh, we could honor uh, the bike time group, the chairman's request, bring together the farmers and bring together the city commission. I think if you sat down, I don't even know if that presentation today was justified, but I think when you sit down and you really hear the ideas and look at the way that this thing can work, I think it would behoove the commission to really uh, – uh, to listen to everything that has to be said on both sides. That's another reason why I think he would love to see the farmers together also because I think having all the groups together, you know, we don't have one story over here, another story over there, and then you get everything in one go and you can able to come out. But I just think that if you do honor that request, just remember that word that uh, we, sold. We, we, we push around a lot now through the nation, through the state, you know, through the municipalities, and that is collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Mayor, uh, I just wanted to say, when this issue first came up two weeks ago, um, did we not say that we felt it was important for the bike time folks and the vendors and the market master to sit down with city staff and work out an agreement? And did you not say earlier tonight that uh, you and Commissioner Hood would facilitate that meeting in the very near future? Well, some said that bringing, you know, in the farmers, I wasn't moving to that point that fast, mm -hmm. but we were going to have commission representation with staff to start hammering out the, the concerns 
and then you know move forward as quickly as possible so that we can you know bring some type of uh, closure to the discussion to the you know benefit of everybody I, I just want to make sure I, I understood correctly the direction we were going and that facilitating the collaboration as described is what we suggested two weeks ago and the direction we've been pursuing okay, thank you you're welcome I, I certainly agree with Commissioner Nash 100 percent that that is the appropriate way to handle these types of issues and I, I just wanted to make sure everybody was clear that that's the direction we headed two weeks ago and that we've been pursuing thank, thank you, you. Your Honor. is it uh, Ms. Ingalls Hi, thank you for letting me be here today. Uh, my name is Nicole Ingalls. I am the wife of Billy Ingalls, and we own Mike's Inn mm -hmm. on um, 555 West Western in Muskegon. We are close to the Ingalls, Eagles in between Eagles and Rackets, mm -hmm. and I wanted to also express our deep appreciation for the bike time uh, people. They, they have organized this event. I think it's been a great event for this city, as we all, I believe, think that. it's. Um, I don't there hasn't been any issues that we have seen at all it's been nothing but wonderful for our area I also have businesses on the very east side of the county and everybody over there is excited about bike time bike time is an exciting time um, with that to the note that he had said that it's an exciting time with those bikes on Western I think that is as they said what really makes it those bikes on Western makes it an exciting time. It makes it where people want to come here, and then those people on the east side of the state of, of the county—I don't know if I said state—east side of the county, they have also expressed to where they've never even been over on this side before. They didn't even know Heritage Landing. They didn't even know of, of other events that go on. So they hear about it through bike time. Then they go to these other events, and they also oh, there's a museum just right down the road. Oh, there's this boat. Oh, there's this. There's that. And they're now coming into this part which I really hadn't been either until I met my husband and learned about all of this stuff, and I just think it's really, really good for this area. And I also um, believe if it continues, the, the bikes on Western is a huge part of it, and I think it would be very wonderful to keep it in that fashion. I'm not, I'm, this is, I don't know a whole lot about the whole farmer's market and all of that stuff, and I am not against any of that. I um, love farmer's markets myself, and I think that's great, and... Um, just hope that you guys do find a win-win and that it can continue in the similarity as it has in the past. Thank you. Thank you. Brett Gilbert. Um, you are, sir. <laughs> <laughs> morning, or morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me tonight. I'm Brett Gilbert. I own Fatty Lumpkins at 971 Washington. Um, I come here tonight uh, really... My first and foremost reason was to, uh, because we're trying to vend down at Pier Marquette mm -hmm. this summer, and how that kind of all started was the festival business that kind of goes on in Muskegon, and we just thought that was a viable resource. We've added some staff to kind of touch on all the big things that happen. Bike time, of course, being the biggest, in our opinion, and probably the biggest potential for a good weekend for some revenue for us, and... Uh, so we were just here for our, for our hearing about Pier Marquette, and I, I see my friends from Bike Time over here, and, you know, they all have a concerned look on their face, and I asked why, and they, t they told me what was going on, so I kind of felt like my involvement with the event on so many different levels obligated me to speak to a couple different things this evening. Um, first off, I, we as a business have been a vocal supporter of moving the farmer's market downtown. Um, I want to thank the commission for making, uh, working that out and making that all happen. Um, and actually, during the weekend of bike time, we're kind of slow. Um, you know, it doesn't help our business, to be honest with you. But um, be kind of because of that, we've kind of taken our show on the road and got the food trailer. And so we're, we're happy to be a part of that. We've signed on this year to have been down there. And uh, probably many of you don't know that a big part of the reason that Fatty Lumpkins even exist is because of festivals like Bike Time and Summer Celebration because that's how I earned my living for my first year, five years out of college. And I was actually uh, one of the people who first wrote the, uh, the traffic plan that you're all considering for the first three years of the event um, with some of the gentlemen here, Dave and 
I don't know how many of you remember that uh, the first year it started down at 7th Street and kind of went in the other direction, and we tweaked that for various safety reasons, but um, I just think that the way it's been worked on over the years, it's kind of been tweaked and perfected and allows access for the buses and the post office and motorcycles, and they've looked at the, the food vendors being on the streets, I know, a lot, and tried to address those concerns, and I think that um, just in the spirit of collaboration, like, Commissioner Nash said, I think that you guys should consider that these people have, you know, these people being Hot Rod Harley have invested in our downtown. And not only that, you know, they're, they're an anchor to our downtown and they've also invested in bike time. And realistically, they're the reason that bike time is here. And I, I just feel like the way this affects my life and my businesses in general, I, th I just felt like I could be somewhat of a testimonial as to we need to work together to make bike time continue to grow and, and I think that changing drastically the design of the traffic flow, flow would be a huge detriment to that. So that was all I really wanted to say. Very good. Thank you, Brad. Thanks. We'll see you down at the beach. Are there any other members of the public that would like to address the commission? If not, Commissioner Hood. If there's nothing else, I move to adjourn. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Hood, seconded by Vice Mayor Spataro, to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Same sign? No? Off we go. <laughs>